And welcome back to ProLine. Jim and myself, we're going to take a look at some storylines taking shape for NFC teams during the preseason. But first, I've been in a good baseball run the last, uh, last four weeks. It's been really solid, uh, especially with the, uh, the bigger plays. Last night took a little dump, but uh, we'll, we'll get right back on track. 21-8 and eight prior to that is very strong. Baseball for four weeks, plus the NFL preseason for four weeks, $19. And that's not for each week. That's $19 for all four weeks. Uh, that, that works out. My math is, is, is pretty good, and I can tell you that that's less than $5 a week. That's good. 855-472-2577. That includes a huge high roller play going tonight, a game I like quite a bit. Jim, it, I mean, these numbers are terrific. You're talking about 230 plays here, so this isn't some short-term deal where, you know, well, I'm on a 21-8 well, run, okay? 137 and 93 baseball run that includes 47 and 21 with the high rollers and those are exclusives and tonight you've got one of those included uh, it, we're actually in a Thursday special that's right Dave uh, four days of plays for $40 including a $500 high roller baseball release going tonight just call 866-546-9467 my clients <coughs> who wager $100 a game on baseball are up over $4,400 on the season, including Sunday's high roller on the Tigers Astros over a 11 and 0 wipeout four days for 40 bucks, 866-546-9467. All right, so we look at some NFC, uh, yeah, NFC preseason storylines, easy for me to say. Um, <laughs> and, you know, look, I know he's not an important part of the team as far as the regular season is concerned, but they haven't even played one game yet. And already, there's I, what I consider, in a, in a sense, because you, you have to have guys out there in the preseason, Dallas has an injury. Uh, a I mean, it's a been big amazing. One. A big injury. And Kellen Moore does something to his ankle. See it for him. Broken ankle. Yeah. I mean, I, don't, I, I, just, I know it was broken. I don't know how he did it. Um, but it doesn't matter. It's broken. So forget about him. Uh, I guess Nick Foles, who asked for his release, is now the natural fit as a backup quarterback in Dallas. I'm sure that'll thrill the Cowboy fans. Uh, you know, the reason we're mentioning this is Moore's not, he's not supposed to play once the regular season starts because that's when Tony Romo's supposed to play. But Tony Romo isn't a sure bet to be playing all the time either because he's, you know, he, I don't know, I hate using this word, but he's starting to seem brittle. Well, you know, he's, he's taken a lot of hits yeah, over the yeah. years, and, and uh, this is, we all know how difficult football is physically. These, these quarterbacks take a pounding if their offensive lines aren't that great or they don't have a great running game. Uh, last year, Dallas had a ton of injuries, and they really slipped badly to a 4-12 record after being quite good the year before, leading the league in rushing, et cetera, et cetera, going to the playoffs. Uh, not so much last year. And this year looks like everything is going their way. Now they have a bunch of suspensions, drugs, you know, all kinds. And then now more. Why more is so important is because he's not physically imposing when you look at him, but he knows how to play yeah. smart. Yeah. He gets the job done. He knows how to win. Now, he's not going to be a, reg a great regular season quarterback, but you can't have Tony Romo out there taking the pounding in the preseason. So all of a sudden now I look at Dallas and I say, if you're going to bet anything on a Cowboy game, and this is just a great tip, I think, for you, bet against them in the preseason. They're just not going to be consistently good. They're going to have a lot I don't of know holes. Where the points are going to come from. Yeah, Dak Prescott, no, right, well, you know, we'll, we'll see, but I, I'm not – I don't think Prescott projects as an NFL regular, so I and I, I this, and he, he's not going to know the offense. This is the Jerry Jones curse. I mean, these injuries year after year, it's unbelievable. I don't know how they're going to do this, but uh, I don't see them putting it out very much in preseason. Uh, no, at this it, point, don't you no. just let, let's get through the preseason if you're the Dallas Exa Cowboys. Exactly. These games don't count anyway. Try to get the week one healthy. Now, the New York Giants were a team that just gave away so many games because of their pathetic defense and poor clock management last year. The clock management, we'll have to see if that gets fixed. Uh, Tom Coughlin's gone. Well, Maybe that yeah, changes. But, you know, McAdoo was on the sidelines last year, too, and so he probably shares part of the, uh, 
of the responsibility oh, for a that. A big part. Uh, but we'll assume that they're going to fix that. What we have to see if they can fix is the personnel, which performed so poorly on defense last year. Now, they, they, they have certainly made an effort in the offseason to shore up that aspect of their team because they signed some, some big guys. Yeah, they did. You know, offensively, I expect this team to be able to put up points pretty easily because they have the talent. They got the wide receivers. They got the quarterback. And uh, Eli had a, had a pretty good year last year, but their defense was absolutely horrendous. Uh, this division, you know, the Cowboys, Washington, Giants, and Philly, there's nothing there that really is inspiring, like no, Super Bowl-bound no. type stuff. I mean, Dallas would have been the team, except for all this stuff that's going on right now. Washington did win it last year, but was that a default? Because the Giants, Philly, and Dallas were so bad. I think it was. Washington's not that solid, but they could win it again. Because Philadelphia and the Giants don't look all that solid, and Dallas with the injuries and uh, the fragility of Romo, potential injuries there, uh, they didn't do very well in the backup situation there last year, so this is a very tough uh, division. Green Bay Packers, who will play this Sunday, and we'll talk about that game at some point, uh, but just sp talking about the Packers, one of the things they didn't do last year was win close games. They had a losing record in one-score games, and one of those wins was the, the uh, miracle, uh, the Hail Mary miracle right. against Detroit. So they've got to get back to what they were doing in 2014 when – if it was a close game, the Packers just won it. It was as simple as that. They've got the personnel to do that. I, I think this team's in, in pretty good shape right now. Uh, part of it is Eddie Lacy, who just showed up completely out of shape last year. Eddie Lazy. Uh, <laughs> but that's not the case this year. All reports are very positive on Lacy. And, uh, you know, look, McCarthy, I, I, Aaron Rodgers is the star. But McCarthy likes to run the football and balance his offense, and that's when Rodgers is at his best. Uh, that's what they want to get back to. I, I think there's a lot of positive signs in this Green Bay camp so far. Well, I, I agree with you that the Packers are the team. To, well, partially I agree with you because Minnesota looks pretty tough. Yeah, they do. And yeah. I happen to like their head coach. And, and, they Detroit, have some, and Detroit played well down the stretch last well, year. That's, so, you, know. you talked about the one loss they had, too. Yep. They started out one and seven, and they should have been seven and one at That's the right. end, except for the loss to the Packers on the Hail Mary at the end, which was an Ameri miracle play. So, you know, what, what's going to happen with the Lions? I mean, you got to look at that second half and say, hey, there's a lot of positives there. They're going to be spreading their offense around, but we're talking about the Packers here. Lacey comes in healthy, running the ball is going to be key. I'm going to look for this league to go back towards focusing on offensive line play and running the football. Why? Because there just aren't that many great By the way, quarterbacks. And you run, you, it doesn't matter because you win games by running the football. And defense. The stats don't lie. Okay, Run and you, defense. If you, if you beat the team on the ground and on both sides of the ball, you're probably going to win the football game. That's correct. Well, uh, look, at, look at Seattle, yeah. Carolina. Both run the ball very well, play good defense. Where were they last year? They were right there. It's it you Minnesota. I'll tell you one team that wasn't there last year. It wasn't because of their rush defense, but you talk about a team that couldn't stop. Their secondary was atrocious last year. It was Tampa. We haven't talked much about Tampa Bay. What do you think of Mike Smith, former Atlanta Falcons head coach? Uh, what do you think of him as their new defensive coordinator? I, this has gotten uh, mixed reviews from a lot of uh, observers who just are looking at it and say, well, wait a minute, what did, you know, that Atlanta defense wasn't exactly uh, the nuts while Smith was there. Well, some, some is, guys... Is he right as a defensive coordinator? And, and, and I, I think it is a, a question that we don't know the answer to, but we'll find out. Can he accept going back to a more subservient role? He's not a head coach anymore. He's no choice. He wants to work. Well, yeah. He wants to work, he wants to make money, and he was a lousy head coach. Bottom line. He's good as a defensive coach, and that's where he is, and now he's got to prove himself all over again. What happens when you elevate yourself from offensive coach or line coach, and now you're head coach? You've got to run the other coaches. You have all the responsibility of doing that. Well, he, I guess he didn't do a good job managing his other coaches. Well, now he has to just manage a defense, which is 
it's you know, not as difficult because you're not dealing with all the egos. You're dealing with players that have to listen to you. I think he'll do a good job. He always was a good defensive coach. He was not the defensive coach with Atlanta. I think he'll do a good job here. Most people I talk to feel like Tampa Bay. I think the over and under on Tampa Bay is seven. Yeah, I think a lot of I people are betting over through. that yeah. because they don't see the Saints in Atlanta being that much better than they were last year. It's possible to get a little bit better. So you're talking about in division games, they might pick up an extra win there. And then, of course, they have the non division games. So I would say Tampa over the win total. I think uh, Smith will do a better job at defensive coach than he did as head coach. And uh, that's the way I'm going with this team. I haven't talked much about the 49ers, so let's do that. And th this comes into play in preseason. Um, obviously, the 49ers are not going to be a good football team. We know that. But you, you can be a good preseason football team. And one of the things that often leads to teams winning games in the preseason quarterback battles. Well, we've got one for the starting job in San Francisco with Kaepernick and Gabbert battling it out. And I think we've got one for the, for the third string position to make the roster between Driscoll, the rookie out of Louisiana Tech, who I, I actually think has a chance to play in this league. Uh, I was very impressed with him as a college quarterback. We're not saying he's going to be a starter, but I think he's got a chance to make a team and, and uh, perhaps contribute on some level. And then Thad Lewis is there who, with Kelly in, uh, in Philadelphia, so he probably knows his tendencies, and he's battling for a roster spot. So you know, this is something to keep in mind. When you're looking at the 49ers in the preseason, you get quarterbacks that are trying to win jobs there, and that can often mean wins for a team in the games that don't count. Absolutely, 100%. I agree with you because now you got Chip Kelly, who basically, I mean, he, not basically, he didn't do a good job in Philadelphia. He's got that He did start. early. Yeah, early in fact, he did. Let me, I, I'll argue but then this. he fell apart. Well, I'll, I'll argue it this way. He was fine until he became his own general manager. And then he completely screwed it up. He, he had no idea what to do on that. Bottom on that line, if he was that good, he'd still be there. Now he's out there, and he's going to a team that's arguably the worst in football, unless you want to throw Cleveland into that mix. So now he's got to prove himself all over again. All I see from Chip Kelly is a great college coach. Now, can he be a great or even efficient or you know, winning coach in, in pro football? I don't know. He's got a lot of work here to do, but Dave is right. In the preseason, this is the kind of team that could win every game yep. they play yep. in the preseason because they all have a lot to prove. And they've got to build up that mindset that we're winners. Get those guys thinking that we're winners. And how do you do that? You do it by winning on the football field. They've got enough quarterback talent here. And Chip Kelly is an innovative kind of guy in preseason against second and third string defenses. They can put up some points. They could win all four games. All right. Uh, we, uh, we have a way for everybody to get free plays every day. You get them on your cell phone, and uh, it's, this is a snap. That's right. Just text the name, the game, G-A-M-E, to 25827. You'll get free plays each and every day right to your cell phone. That's game, G-A-M-E, to 25827. All right. First time we've uh, been able to do this since uh, we started doing the show again this summer. And that is talk about an actual football game that's taking place this weekend. <laughs> it's not the most compelling game of all time, but there's plenty to talk about on it. It's the Hall of Fame game. We'll do that next right here on ProLineTV.com.